Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're gonna be taking a look at iOS 15, the very first publicly available final release of the operating system that was just released yesterday as of me recording this video. Now iOS has been in development and public beta for a couple months now and I actually did a video on the iOS 15 developer beta one when that was released back in June and we installed it on my iPhone 6s right here and you guys really seem to like that video probably because it was titled everything went wrong because well everything went wrong in that video we weren't able to do a direct upgrade we had to end up getting iTunes involved and just do a full restore and it, it was a mess but we got it installed it's actually still running by the way the iOS 15 developer beta one I have not upgraded this to any of the later developer betas or any of the public betas and I've purposely done that so that we can make this video right here because we're gonna be trying to do a direct upgrade from developer beta one to the final release and we're gonna see if it's even possible and we're gonna see if we have to get iTunes involved like we did last time if we cannot do it via OTA so this very well could be another but everything went wrong video but if you read the title well you already know that and I'm really excited because this is the first time I'm I'm going to be installing the final release of iOS 15. I've not installed it on my main iPhone, which is an iPhone 11. I've not installed it on that yet. I've saved installing it for this video so we can experience it together and yeah, see what problems we get into. Hopefully everything will go smoothly, but if everything goes wrong, well, you can say it's a classic MJD video. So let's see what we can do here. So of course, settings is indicating to us that there's an update. So we're gonna go in here. Oh, it's actually not even for an update, it's for finishing setting up your iPhone. Uh, I did a full restore, so I've restored this back to uh, factory settings, but it is still, if we go into general here and go to about, it is still running 15.0, but with the build number, which I believe you just tap this to get the build number. There you go. That is the build number for iOS 15 developer beta one. So we're gonna go back here to general and go to software update and let's just see what happens. Your software is up to date. Also available iOS 15.0. So uh, yeah, this is referring, this is interesting though. It says your software is up to date when there were, do I still have the developer certificate on here? But anyways, it does, once you tap that down there, it does show up here, iOS 15, 4.24 gigabytes. We're gonna download and install. And let's see if this is as simple as it should be. So the file is almost done downloading here. And if you remember from that last video, the file was able to download just fine in that episode. When we went to install the developer beta, that's when we ran into issues because we were running, at the time this phone was running, a public beta build of iOS 14. So let's just see what happens here. We've got about four seconds remaining, zero seconds remaining now. That's great, preparing update, there it goes. And that's it, it's downloaded. So let's tap install now. Verifying update, okay, looks promising. We got an Apple logo, we got a pinwheel, and we got a progress bar. I'm feeling good about this one, guys. I think this will be a smooth installation process. You know what? I'm not gonna say anything further because it seems like every time that I do that, something goes wrong. I think that's actually what happened in the last video. I think I said something like, oh, okay, this is looking good. And then literally, as I said that, something went wrong. Verifying update, okay. This is, uh, well, I'm not gonna say anything because you know, it could, something could go wrong. Unable to install update. So I'm just not gonna say anything further. Let's see what happens. And that's it, everybody. It definitely took a while, but it was smooth sailing. No problems at all. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? I actually can. I thought for sure something was going to happen. But there you go. For those wondering if you can update from developer beta 1 to the final release of iOS 15, yes, you can. It works totally fine. And yeah, that's awesome. So we're going to not bother setting up Touch ID. We're just going to kind of speed through this here. So we're going to not use. We're going to not even set a passcode. This is not my primary phone so i'm not super concerned about that so we'll just not use a passcode don't share those analytics welcome to iphone get started so one of the first things that i want to do we are going to dive into ios 15 and check out a couple of things on it this is not going to be a full review or anything like that just kind of an initial exploration because this is my first time again using the final release of ios 15. now i did in the last video with the developer beta build we did check out safari so let's go in here and see if it looks 
any different. One of the things that I was wondering is if they were going to add the reload button to the bar here, to the address bar. Yes, they have. Okay, I'm a happy camper there. So in the developer beta one, there was no reload button down here. It was hidden behind another menu that you had to get to, and it looks like that's completely gone actually. Oh yeah, they've added this bar down here. This was not here before. So just as a refresher right here, this is how it looked in developer beta one. So you had the address bar down here at the bottom, which is still where it's at, but it, it was kind of floating so here when we're on like a, a web page here it is sectioned off into its own little box down here which I did prefer this but you see that there weren't as many controls right so you just had the tabs button and that button there which had everything else behind it so now they've gone back to the way at least at the the bottom row here it's the same as it is currently in iOS 14 the same back forward share sheet bookmarks and tabs there and then you've got your text controls here, which is just how it is in iOS 14, you know, and you get to your request desktop website, website settings, privacy report, all of that. And your reload button is here. So this was one thing that I was wondering about. And it's good to see that they've kind of compromised here. They've given us the same controls that we we're used to in iOS 14 with still moving the address bar to the bottom, which is one of the things that they changed initially. And, you know, this was probably added back in one of the developer betas or perhaps the public beta. But again, I've not seen any of the other betas. I've just seen developer beta one and the final release. So this is, I, I suspect this was certainly a change made in developer beta two, three or, or public beta one or whatever so anyways the next thing that I want to touch on and really the main thing that I want to touch on in this video is the maps application because I want to check out all of these really cool new features where you can zoom in to specific cities and view landmarks and it looks really really cool and I want to see if it's even available if it's even supported here on the iPhone 6s because as I'm sure all of you know when you're using an iOS device that is at the bottom of the barrel in terms of compatibility with Apple's newest operating system version, you're not gonna get all of the features. We experienced this in the developer beta one video when I tried to test out live text on the iPhone 6S. Well, live text, which is the feature where you can hold your phone's camera up to a business card or something with text on it, and it can pull text from it like a phone number and be able to call it. Uh, Google has a very similar similar feature in, I believe it's the Google search application or Google photos, I think is the application that features that it's a very similar feature. In fact, you can do that on the iPhone 6s if you want to just download that. But that feature is not available on the iPhone 6s, which is unfortunate. So I want to see if we can do all this cool map stuff here on the iPhone 6s. So let's open up the maps application here. And we're going to just click cancel here. We'll do continue. And I suspect if I go here and search for San Francisco, we'll just cancel out of that, which by the way, I'm going to San Francisco soon for to shoot footage for a couple really cool upcoming video projects. I've mentioned this before that I'm going to California. San Francisco is the destination and I'm really, really excited about it. But let's go to San Francisco here. I wanna to go to the same exact landmark that they do. So they go to the ferry building. No, so we're not getting it because we're supposed to be seeing trees here. We're supposed to be seeing uh, roads like in gray here. I mean, we see the road still, like the, there's a road that exists, but we don't get that more detailed view. All right, so I've been exploring maps off camera a little bit, and it looks like we're not getting any of these 3D effects here on maps on the iPhone 6S, which does not surprise me at all because of course, this is six-year-old hardware, so it makes sense for Apple to limit some of these features. So right here, I've got a screen grab from WWDC where Apple is showing off Maps' ability to display elevation. And you can see here on the iPhone 6S, we're at the same landmark and it looks completely different. Everything's flat, it's the same elevation all around, so it, we're not getting that feature here. Let's see, what else do I wanna take a look at? Well, so far we already jumped into Maps, of course, like I said, was the main thing I wanted to cover. Of course, FaceTime, we did a dedicated video on. If you wanna see the process of joining a FaceTime call from a Windows PC, you can check that out up here in the card. That was a pretty neat video to do, and yeah. So we're not gonna really dive into that here. I do wanna see Notification Center. 
We do have to get some notifications though. So let's go to reminders here and we'll see what the notification looks like in five minutes when it comes in. In the meantime, let's go to the weather app here, which apparently is not on the front page here. There it is on the second page. I am a huge fan of this weather app, by the way. It's super nice. And here's the temperature map so we can see more here. So it's 84 degrees in Cupertino right now. We'll just wait for our notification to come in. There we go. And of course, here's what they look like in Notification Center. Well, yeah, guys, there you have it. I mean, that's really all I wanted to touch on. Of course, this is not a review. Like I said, this is just was a nice installation video, seeing if we ran into any problems, which we did. And this was a completely flawed this video no issues at all can you believe it like what's happening something always has to go wrong in these videos right but no not always because well it's it's nice when things go right every once in a while right isn't it awesome when things just go according to plan and not just completely spiraling out of control like we had happened in the last video but that's really all i've got to say guys i am looking forward to installing this on my iphone 11 we'll see how it is but so far, I'm pretty impressed. So anyways, guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up and get subscribed down below. Turn on those notifications if you haven't already, because I upload new videos multiple times every week on this channel. So be sure to do that so you'll get notified immediately when they come out. And as always, guys, I will see you all in the next video.